1133. Welcome back here to the Let's Cook It Break. Can we, did we have Eric Joseph ready to go? And let's settle this once and for all because the lovely Barbara, who I think is freezing somewhere in Seattle, uh, to clarify, Paul, I believe you were in error. The uh, Puxatani Phil did not see his shadow. Did not. The repeat is did not see the shadow. And then that means it'll be an earth. Spring is on its way. That is correct. Thank okay. you, Eric Joseph. Okay. That's very good. And so well, thanks to Barbara. And I believe um, uh, uh, Maui Bill also jumped in there. And is it, it's Poxitani, uh, Pennsylvania is where this whole thing happens, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah, I was actually on my way to the studio to report it to I you, but that. I tripped and fell and sprained my ankle, so I actually oh. had a crawl. Oh, my God. Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. You know, you news guys have a lot going. What's the latest there in uh, Oklahoma, that tragedy of that car that went into the the river and uh, they think all eight possibly no longer uh, alive. It's uh, To those of you in the uh, cold, please, uh, extra care in this. And our hearts and prayers go out to that uh, the people in the truck. Yes, Paul Stern, let's can move ahead with the show. Yeah, let's move forward here. We happen to have with us on the line. We were talking about Paso Robles, been talking about it. It seems like all week ever since we heard the news that our good friend Topin James has been honored as the wine industry person of the year. And that, of course, draw our attention to Paso Robles big time. And uh, in that vein, let's welcome on in the marketing director of the Travel Paso Robles Alliance. We happen to have with us Marianne Stansfield. Marianne, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's kind of our tribute to Paso Week. We've been talking about you and talking about the good winemakers, as Paul mentioned. What do you see in Paso? I mean, we know that it's a great wine area, and there are a lot of grapes and many great wineries. Uh, yeah. First of all, let's start. What, what is the Paso Robles? What's the history? What does Paso Robles mean? Well, Paso Robles means it's actually El Paso de Robles. It's uh, the Pass of the Oaks uh, because it's actually founded in a, a rolling hill area. It's kind of the foothills of the Santa Lucia coastal mountain chain. Um, we're about a half hour from the coast. So, so, and these rolling hills are covered with oaks, so Pass of the Oaks. All right. What can you see there when you go there? Obviously, beautiful rolling hills and, as I mentioned, uh, vineyards. But uh, what else is there? Well, actually, you know, um, we've been a, a agricultural, historic agricultural region um, since the, the Mission Padres came and started building missions here in the region. There's uh, two uh, historic missions here uh, nearby Paso Robles, um, and they're the first ones that, pan, uh, that planted wine grapes. So we've got a 200-year history of, of, of wine in our region, actually. It's only been over kind of the past uh, 35 years that it's really grown um, to the to point that it is. Now we have 200 wineries. Um, so aside from the rolling hills and the beautiful vineyards, um, we have a burgeoning olive oil industry that is taking off and, and leading the way throughout California um, where, you know, people here, and, and it's trending nationwide and all over the world where people are really watching their, their footprint here, uh, carbon footprint. They're trying to buy local, and, and uh, we have this amazing, amazing um, olive oil industry. Also, agritourism is really huge here. You can, you know, go visit farms. You can make your own goat cheese. Um, you know, it's it's really that kind of rural um, hometown experience um, that you get. But it's but it has a bit of sophistication. We also have this really burgeoning downtown area that was, um, you know, we have a big downtown charming park and there's shopping and wine tasting and beautiful uh, uh, artisan shops all around as well. So. So it's it's a, it's a, got a lot going on. Marianne, am I not correct when I uh, say that there are also some type of natural springs that I think are very rejuvenating for the the, the body and of course yeah. uh, all that good stuff that goes along with that yeah. as well. Actually, that was one of the first. Actually, uh, that was our first tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. um, again, back in the time of when the Mission Padres came here, um, they you know this this area they they decided to build here because of those Mission Hot Springs. A lot of people started then visiting once they. Or, or, I'm sorry, not Mission Hot Springs, but uh, Natural Hot Springs, Sulphur Springs, um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 put Pass Robles on the map over the past um, hundred years or so. Um, drawn, you know, movie stars from Hollywood like Marilyn Monroe, and and uh, we had uh, Jesse James living here uh, <clears throat> a long time ago. Drury James. Really. And, uh, what's that? Jesse James, the outlaw. The outlaw. So here's the story. Jesse James' uncle, Drury James, owned um, the Pass Robles Inn, and um, that was the um, the hot spring center of town. They had hot spring tubs in, in all the rooms and that kind of thing. 
and uh, he he hid out when he was being you know uh, sought after by the law. He hid out in pass rolls for a couple of months. You know, if I'm not mistaken, Mike, I think you and I have actually broadcast from the uh, the Paso Robles Inn. Yeah, we have, but I didn't see Jesse James hanging out. So he hung out there for about a month, and then what happened? A couple months, and then and then I think he pretty much got ran out of town. It's it's <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah. All There's right. great uh, history books, actually, at the Paso Robles Inn. They have about all, all of those um, uh, really uh, neat historic tidbits. So that's great. And so, and Paul mentioned the uh, the beautiful Paso Inn. There's a lot of restaurants and a lot of hotels. This yeah. is a great getaway place because Highway 101 runs from uh, you know up and down the coast of California, but you're midway between Los Angeles and San Francisco at Paso Robles. So, uh, to the uh, if you're heading north to the left, you're very close to the ocean, and if you go to the right, you go inland. And it gets warmer. There's beautiful skies, beautiful uh, landscapes, and and lots of places to stay. Yes, yes, we have we have great great accommodations. Everything from you know, boutique um, hotels like Hotel Cheval is a 14-room in right in downtown Paso Robles, um, really, you know, high-end. Um, Paso Robles Inn is also right downtown on the park, um, really nice uh, uh, property there with a great um, steakhouse on site, great, uh, great wine list, of course. Um, and we also have, you know, we have accommodations to suit everyone um, from, you know, budget accommodations, people just, you know, um, uh, on their way uh, north south and just want to stop over for a night, um, not really planning to stay, which we which happens a lot because, like you said, our location we're in central California, right on the coast. A lot of people are headed either north or south to LA or San Francisco, and sometimes inland. I mean, we're right off the I five about you know 50 minutes, so it's we're really easy to get to. Um, but we've also got really nice um, you know branded accommodations that people are familiar with, La Quinta in. Actually, our La Quinta Inn is one of the top La Quinta Inns um, in the country. Why? Um, yeah, it's, pl- it's planted right in the middle of wine country on the east side. Um, oh. Headed over towards Tobin James' neck of the woods. <laughs> we like Tobin James, I'm telling you. we like it. And, and for those, and again, we had some comments in the chat room yesterday. I don't know if it was the coach who, uh, of course, never gets their name mentioned in the chat room, but someone brought it up that uh, they're allergic. I believe, I believe it was Barbara, but we'll mention the coach's name because they like to hear their name mentioned a lot on the uh, broadcast in our chat room. A- and they're wondering about drinking wine. If you're allergic to it, do you know if you, you have the organic wine, can you then have wine if the sulfites are gone? I mean, if people could enjoy finding some organic wineries there in Paso. Yeah, we do have organic wineries here in Paso. We have a lot of wineries that are also sustainable, um, use sustainable farming practices. It's a huge part of our our region here. People are really aware. We've got a lot of young winemakers that are really up on all those trends. So, um, but yeah, I think it is the sulfites that generally make you know have uh, have that bad reaction. So, so yeah, um, drinking organic wine is definitely an 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 option for people that kind of. Have some kind of reaction to wines, and I just actually sent off a, a email to Chris Toronto, the communications director over at the Paso Wine Alliance, and I'm hoping he's going to email me back with a list of some wines I can mention on the. Oh, air that here. would be great! Now there you go. Now, what's the website if we want to travel there and check out what we can see? Where can we go on the web? Yeah, that's travelpaso.com. Travelpaso, P-A-S-O dot com. Yep, and uh, it uh, it goes over, you know, accommodations. You know, we have some travel promotions that are always listed on there, um, event listings, you know, places to go and, and, and things to see. Um, it really is a great, uh, you know, way to figure out what you want to do when you come to Paso. The Pass of the Oaks, Paso Robles. Thanks so much for being with us. Straight ahead, much more coming up on CRN. We have someone coming up from a brand-new comedy show on NBC. This is a special alert to 